Hello there and welcome back to this video series on control systems. Over the past uh, few videos we have seen root locus method, how root locus method is useful in detecting and improving stability of a system and we have also seen uh, effect of adding a pole or zero board to open loop system and to closed loop system. We will go ahead with this uh, study here. Uh, in a slightly different, uh, in a slightly different perspective, that is, we'll try to study what is the effect of proportional action, integral action, and derivative action. And of course, with combination PI, PD, and PID. We'll get into uh, this video, but before then, it would be very useful if you look at video 005, 24, and 25 and familiarize, refresh yourself once again with block diagram algebra and perhaps a little bit of time response analysis also that would be really useful in making the most out of this video. With that said, let us jump into this video itself and consider what we mean by P, I and D. P stands for proportional term in the controller I stands for integral term in the controller, B stands for derivative term in the controller. Perhaps in mid 1900s, uh, these PID controllers came forth uh, with very easy to implement uh, amplifiers of amps and even now in the digital era, the amplifiers uh, and analog circuitry Though it came down well, PID controllers stood the test of time. PID controllers in the digital form stood the test of time. We will try to explain uh, the PID actions uh, in the form of this block diagram. Okay. This KP is called the proportional term, KI is called the integral term and KDS is called the derivative term, proportional KP integral ki over s derivative kd multiplied by s. The proportional controller has a form kp. We call it proportional because the control uh, input us is directly proportional to the error. That is the reason why we call it proportional controller. Here kp is the tunable proportional gain. We want to see how the system behaves uh, under the action of this KP perhaps with a step input and of course in the presence of a disturbance how it is rejecting the effects of these disturbance. To do that we will write equations for each block and simplify to get this equation. I will leave it for you to carefully write down the equations and see whether you get this. This you can uh, simplify as 1 plus tau e. This you can simplify as shown here 1 plus tau e s acting on C s is equal to k k p by 1 plus k k p and so on. We simply put these two terms together and derived both the left hand side and right hand side by 1 plus k k p to get this. Okay. You can see that the original system has a time constant tau sub t. With introduction of this proportional integral action, we saw that the new time constant is tau e, which is tau p divided by 1 plus k k p. So, if you increase this k p very high, this tau p is very less. Okay. So, less time constant means faster system. So, you can make a slower system, a slightly faster system properly by choosing Kp. Also, we see that this term 1 over 1 plus Kkp is coming into picture acting on the disturbance. That is, the effect of disturbance can be reduced by increasing this proportional gain. When this term Kp increases, the effect of the disturbance decreases. That is one uh, important factor that we can notice. If we set aside disturbance by setting it to 0, 
we get a relation between input and output as shown over here. Okay. For a step input, the output may be calculated as this by solving this uh, differential equation. And we see that steady state output for a step input is kkp by 1 plus kkp which is not 0. You can bring it very close to 0 but theoretically there is a steady state error to step input. That is one downside of proportional controller. If we go back two slides and see there are uh, a couple of advantages. One advantage is uh, by choosing kp large we can uh, reduce the effect of disturbance. We can uh, bring the uh, steady state error close to unity and also we can make time constant to be much smaller. These disturbances, uh, these contributions of the proportional control action shown in red color, uh, we may let to believe that the, it is best to choose Kp as large as possible. But remember large values of Kp may lead to instability. Thus, choice of uh, this proportional gain involves a trade-off between performance and stability. For integral action, we have seen that uh, Ki over S is the controller block. This is the controller block, this is the system and this is the disturbance uh, transfer function. This Ki is the tunable integral gain. We see the effect of this gain in subsequent slides. If we carefully write the equations for each block and simplify, this is what we get. This is the equation we got. This uh, came out to be a quadratic equation. If you put it in standard second order form, you have omega, in the place of omega and square, you have k k i by tau p, 2 xi omega and place, you have 1 by tau p, and you have an additional s here. We see that the order of the system, the original system was a first order system, now it became a second order system when we introduced integral action. The natural frequency, this is the this is the placeholder for natural frequency, something into s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square is the standard form. If you go back and look at standard form, you will see that omega n square can be increased, that is omega n by, can be increased by increasing ki, ki to be large. But doing so will make the damping to be very small, resulting in oscillations. Disturbances are attenuated, um, accentuated, that is you have a derivative term here, uh, even a small disturbance. Uh, is accentuated because when you differentiate it, you are talking in terms of slopes. Slope could be very high, effect of disturbance uh, is high. The disturbances may percolate very deeply into the system to cause oscillations. Next, we will see a little bit about uh, what happens when uh, a disturbance is zero and if you give a step input steady state value of the output you can see as this using final value theorem this is equal to 1. So the system now tracks the step input there is no error but the price we paid is that system became oscillatory okay by introducing uh, integral action the system may become oscillatory but it kills the steady state error. We see that pure derivative action is very rarely used, is seldom used, rarely used. Because at certain flat portions of the error plot, pure derivative action cannot detect that there is a steady state error. If you see the slope here is at point P1, tangent P1, there is a slope. So derivative action can detect this. There is a slope here, derivative action can detect this. But around this point T3, um, pure derivative action cannot detect that there is a steady state error. Because of this reason, pure derivative action is very rarely used. You use 
a small proportional action uh, along with the derivative action. So this derivative, proportional derivative, there is a proportional term, there is a derivative term. So you uh, write the equations and get the characteristic equation as this. I would leave it for you to verify that this is correct. And you see that omega n is uh, k times kp by tau and kkd is this. So we can adjust omega n and damping ratio independently because omega n depends only on kp. This uh, xi depends on kp and kkd. So you can adjust both omega n and damping ratio. However, these are not exact omega n and zeta because this is not exact uh, second order, second order transfer function. A second order transfer function will have omega n square by s square plus 2 xi n plus omega n square. So this is not exactly in that form. You have a proportional form, you have, you have a proportional term and an integral term. Okay? You need to remember that these omega n and damping ratio are not exact values. With that we will come back to the final uh, controller that is proportional plus integral control action. This is proportional term and this is integral term k i over s. If you put both of these in, I left the disturbance, uh, disturbance kind of thing uh, aside. You see the characteristic equation order increased by 1. And from Routes criterion, we see that Kp over tau should be greater than Ki should be greater than 0. I would leave it for you to write Routes criterion for one row S cube, for, uh, the S cube row for one S square S1. Put the terms tau and Akp, then 1 and Aki and complete the Routes table. You see that uh, this is the region for stability. The steady state um, error for step input is 0. However, we need to choose Kp and Ki to achieve satisfactory transient response specifications. In summary, we say that PID control actions may be applied in suitable applications. And in non-sensitive situations, you can just use P action. But P control action uh, it can reduce effects of uh, disturbances, but uh, still there may be some steady state error. Integral action removes or reduces the steady state error when judiciously used. If you use a properly tuned PI controller, uh, you may get steady state error to be zero. Um, however, you need to be very careful because that may set in oscillation. Pure B action is seldom used. P uh, proportional controller and derivatives together they are used. Uh, we can get this uh, tuned uh, PD controller to work well to give nicely damped response. I think that's all we have for now. Have a great day.